Hey guys, welcome to the Double Chat Show. Once again, I am Mike Chan. I'm Dan Chen. And we are the Double, the Double Chance. Chance. It's my favorite time of the week, Mike. And we got a great topic for all of you. This 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 one makes me angry. All right. But anyways, probably <laughs> because it. we don't fit in any of these uh, categories. But we're gonna... wait, wait, wait. Nah, nah. I fit in some of them. You fit in none no. of them. I'll tell you why I'm angry. Another reason. But anyways, start it off. All right, topic for this video is things that make a guy instantly hotter. Now, if you guys watch us a lot, you pretty much know that uh, I'm, I was like a late bloomer in that, you know, in high school, I did not uh, get a lot of attention romantically from the opposite sex. So naturally, I'm looking at these guys in high school and also parts of college where I'm like, wow, this guy is deemed hot or popular. And it's for this, almost to me, this arbitrary reason. And we're gonna tell you those reasons. And they're true! Yeah. That's why I'm mad. It's, it's, it's difficult because uh, we weren't born gifted in certain aspects who, which are completely out of our control. Okay. So it's even harder to just initiate the conversation with the All opposite right. sex. For example... For, the first one, like you said, the very first one. If a guy is tall, he's instantly hotter. What the heck, dude? Like, seriously, seriously. Like, this is absolutely true. This is Everywhere. true. Everywhere. Cross the board. All right. You know, you know, you know the phrase tall, dark, and handsome? You can cross handsome out, because there's plenty of tall, dark, ugly guys that got that gets attention. And also in China, Gao Fu Shuai. Yeah. Gao tall is always first. Yeah. Number one, priority. Definitely. This is how I know. This is how I know as a fact. Do not deny this men and women. A lot of times when you ask a girl, oh, why do you think he's attractive? First thing they'll say, he's tall. tall. Like, what? And honestly, seriously. Uh, if a t okay, and also, all, all the tall girls, when they meet us, <laughs> it's just like, uh, yeah. And, and if there's no second date, yeah, 80% of the reason we're shorter than you. I gotta tell you the story, all right? <laughs> In college, all right? Uh -huh. This is when I kind of developed, uh, this is kind of when I basically wasn't afraid of approaching women, okay? Right. In college, I was the same height as I was in high school. 5'5". Five, five. I see this really gorgeous blonde walking down the street. Tall, blonde, like, just like your cheerleader looking girl, okay? At that point, I don't care. So I just go approach them. I scored a date. She's like 5'10". Oh, okay. I'm 5'5". Five, five. Yeah. You know, she's tall, leggy, yep, you know, yep. beautiful. She, you know, she probably agreed to go out with me because, you know, I approached her, I showed that I was confident, and, you know, I scored a date. There was no second date. Did she tell you why? No, but come <laughs> on, man! And look at the look at, Why did she look agree at, in the first place then? No, she probably didn't want to... Look, Dude, here, here's the thing I learned. She didn't want to upset the short guy? No, like, what, you know, here's the thing I learned. Like, this is also could be advice. Like, when, when you get older, like, as long as you're confident, like, you'll get a shot with Exactly, girl, that's true. You know? That's very true. But I'm pretty sure she was like, dude, it's like. And, and you know, there's no way we can be taller. Right. Now, let's say you are short. Yes. Okay. So, all right, I'm short, you're short. We're, now, if we're competing with other short guys, they got us beat if, let's say, all of a sudden, they're good, they have a particular talent. Now, here, here's the thing. I could play the piano. Piano is not that sexy, all right? It's sexy if you can play and sing. Okay, all right, which You're I like can't Billy do. Joe. No, no, I play classical <laughs> piano, Mike. I'm sorry, Mozart is not sexy, okay? Some other kid comes along, starts playing what instrument is sexy? Anything guitar. other than piano. Guitar. guitar? Yeah, I can eat a lot, that doesn't really help me. No, that's like, <laughs> dude, for once, I want the tables turned. I want a girl to find us attractive, cause like, well, you, cause you can stuff your face and eat like six pounds of meat. There's this other key factor that makes a guy instantly attractive okay. is the accent. Oh. It is not just any accent, okay? Oh. It's not just any accent. My worst nightmare. It's like a British accent. Or Australian, Australian accent. Australian accent. No, it's only those two. No, French accent too. Guys with French accents, girls no, like French I have girls to disagree. Like French accents. I have to disagree. My, my friend from Australia, he came to the United States and a, he will get a date every single week because yeah. all he has to do is talk. Dude, that, all he's got to do is talk. One of our favorite movies, Love Actually, all right? If you haven't seen what that's me and Mike's same. favorite. That's not my favorite. Oh, that's, that's not your favorite. favorite. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I just tried to take your man card away. All right, my that's one of my favorite romantic comedies, Love Actually, it's so true. The guy in there, cannot is such a dork in Britain and he goes to America and the girls fall over him 
because he's like, yeah, I've got a British accent, yeah. Dude, no one falls over Chinese accents. Dude, for <laughs> once, for <laughs> once, I want a girl to be like, dang. That guy has the hottest yeah. Chinese accent ever. You know you should go out with me. <gasps> oh, hello. You so pretty. I will take you out and spend a lot of money on you. Yeah, I, I, for once, I want a girl to hear that and be like, oh man, he's so that hot. That accent is so amazing. You know what country I actually would love to live in? What's if that? I didn't live in the US, What's that? I would live in Australia. You know why? I know why. Okay, I went to Australia. And I was shocked when I heard yeah, this. Yeah, I went to Australia and this is fact. Australian people find American accents sexy. Which I'm like, how? Because to me, the American accent so, is not sexy too. So when I went to Australia, I was walking around like, like a British person in America. I'd just be like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, dude, dude, this is like, awesome. I, this, <laughs> no one ever finds this accent dude, sexy. Seriously, man. I was, I did have this, I, I was very good with kids. And I think that when you see a guy who is good at kids or with pets, that's a little attractive. But that's more like the, oh, kind of thing. It's not like the, wow, you're hot. You know, it's yeah. like, it's like, oh, you're, you're attractive, you're cute, but not like you're hot. Well, huh? basically the, the ones that we named that instantly makes a guy attractive yeah. is are ones that are, are more appearance wise. So when right. girls, they, they know right away. Like uh, other, other things make uh, men more attractive, like uh, if they're a really good cook, Oh yeah, yeah, right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's but right. I, you're not gonna be able to see that. Yeah. You know, I'm not gonna walk around with a with a walk and be like and walk down the street right. and you're like, oh. The, the cooking thing is something you, if you're really good at, you gotta make sure you get past the part, the superficial part, yeah. so you can show that. Right. That's a strategy. Right. Definitely, like, yo, girl, well, being well dressed. Like a lot of women, they they might not say it, but dude, they they look at what the guy wears, and usually they don't really care that much but it's a huge plus. And I don't mean like you have to be like the cutting edge of fashion. You just can put, you're well put together or you clean up nice, you know? And this is kind of different. Like, let's say we're in China. Yeah. A lot of these won't apply. Why is that? They won't apply because, okay, first of all, uh, the Chinese, the, a Chinese girl isn't gonna swoon over a guy with a British accent. No. Uh, look, it's no. gonna be, as long as <laughs> the Chinese the Chinese girl left to swoon over like Westerners in I general. I see. I see. But you, just because you have a British right. accent, it's not going to be like that's it's not going to be it's one up over like American accent. Exactly. Right. Dude, I bet in China they would appreciate Mozart a little bit. If I I think if I was in China and I played classical Mozart, they'd be like, Yeah, what's up? Yeah, man. You should yeah, go try man. that out. Yeah, it's too late now. Uh, another thing is I don't know if this is true in China, but in America, obviously in high school, in high school especially, if you're an athlete. That's, if you're an athlete, hands down, you could be right. not attractive. And that's not the case in China. It's not. Or it's more about, are you a good student? I still see a lot of guys trying to acquire these superficial things because they think that they might work. Right, and, that, and that's fine and all fine and dandy. Right. But every time you attract someone with a superficial attribute, right. um, unless you have something deeper, right. usually oh. this won't go too long. All right. You have a t Mike, when you're in college, right? You had one superficial attribute that you went after to obtain more women. <laughs> All did. right, and this is definitely will make will make a guy instantly more attractive yeah. if you have a six pack. Thank you. So yeah. you, yeah, yeah. Okay, I know that. All right, I had a six pack and I leaned out, lean on that a lot. <laughs> um, but no, that, that was my attribute, okay, I was, whatever. But hey, you know, we were in college, yeah. like, dude, I try to have these things, you know? Dude, I played the guitar in college because everyone else did. Right. And I gave in, I was like, but you know I'm what? just saying, nowadays, okay, especially with social media. Yeah. Are you meeting people before you're actually meeting people? Right. You get to know people before you actually right. know those people, right. like, see them face to face. Right. So people are much more likely to actually start falling in love mm -hmm. and building a strong relationship outside of these attributes that quote unquote makes a guy right. instantly more attractive. And and here's the thing. So what you know I, I was saying I got angry at these because I see I went I've been through right. this. I didn't want to purposely I play the piano because I love the piano. Right. I play the guitar because it could get me more women. All right. And now looking back on that, I wish I didn't I don't want to do those things. Now I know I didn't have to. If I you know like I wish I just spent that time playing the piano more because right. I'd be much happier being able to be a better pianist than just knowing a few chords on the guitar. So guys, the lesson to take away from this is, 
be whoever you are. Yeah. Because there's always, especially like I said in this, we're all connected now. Exactly. You dude. can always find someone that has exactly. a common ground with you. Dude. Exactly. Dude, nowadays you could be really good at video games, comic books, and, and you'll somebody... find someone else who's exactly. really good at video games and comic books. You're gonna go to Comic Con or E3 and find that beautiful yeah. cosplay chick. Anyways, right. you're you're gonna find somebody. And just be comfortable with who you are. Make yourself a better person. Mm -hmm. uh, teach yourself more skills. Make yourself more round, more well-rounded. All right, guys. Last week we did a question about interracial date advice about interracial dating that basically you're going to see a lot of. And similar this week, we see this question all the time, so we want to kind of answer it in one definitive time, which is. And so I'm going to I'm going to read a question. Uh, I'm not going to say their name just in case they don't want this person to know. But thanks for the question. Uh, hi, my name is. I am 15, soon to be 16, and I live in the UK. There is this girl who I have liked for a really long time, yep. but we have become really good friends. And I fear that I might be stuck in the friend zone. She is half Chinese, half English, and I am Malaysian, Huaren, which is Chinese, mm -hmm. and Arab. I really want to ask her out, but I don't want to ruin our friendship. What should I do? Getting out of the friend zone is difficult. And the only way to get out of the friend zone, honestly, guys, is to risk it. You risk it. You got to do it. It's either one or the other. It's either one or the other. And here's and, and let me add one thing to that. Just like in Harry Met Sally, okay? Girls and guys can never really be friends. All right, we're just telling you that right now. Girls are gonna say, "Yeah, you can." No, shh, no, you can't. Okay, you can't. So, like Mike said. You have to go for it. Yeah, and it might end up you're not friends anymore. Right. And honestly, here's the thing. What's worse, right? Not being friends <laughs> with a girl you like you like as a friend anymore, or being her best buddy and seeing her date other guys. Like yeah. what's worse? Because that's gonna happen. Yeah. Yeah. And and then guess who she's gonna come and tell? You. And she's gonna get advice from you about the guy she is dating. And, and, and you're gonna be like, yeah, she keeps coming to me. I'll be there for her. Exactly. You're only always gonna be there for her. Right. Okay. So here's the thing. All right. Here's the thing. When you're young, you think it's the end of the world. Okay. You're not afraid that you're gonna lose her as a friend. You're just afraid of rejection. That that's all it is. True. All right. Honestly, I just bursted everyone's bubble out there because if they were really really good friends with you. They're gonna remain friends with you. You know why? Because you put your feelings out there, and they say no, and you go, "Hey, I still like your friendship." So therefore, you're not gonna make it weird. The only way you're gonna lose the friendship is if afterwards you make it all weird, and then she's like, "Uh, right?" Yeah, if you're not true. weird, dude, dude. Here's a good example. I've been in a friend zone with a girl. I've been, I got past the friend zone. I actually, yep. I actually did what most guys couldn't do, and I failed many times. But in this case, I broke through the friend zone. Sure. And then it didn't work out. Yep. We're still friends. Yep. And you know we laugh about it. Yep. You know we're like, hey, remember the time that we dated or yep. we yeah, tried yeah, to yeah, make yeah. it work and it didn't work. Yeah. But we're still good friends because yeah. the foundation is there. Yeah. I was in a friend zone uh, in college for about two years. Um, in this one particular friend zone. And then one day I realized, you know what? Because she, it happened exactly like I told you guys. We're, I'm in her friend zone and she's dating guys. And then she's coming to me complaining about the guy she's dating. So finally one day after two years, I'm like, you know what? You can play about all these guys. <laughs> give us a chance. Oh no, you did that. Yeah, dude. I did that. I'm like, dude. why don't you give us a chance? Oh, I will never treat you like this guy. Dude, cue the sappy music right now. You did not say said, it like that. I said, I said it just like that. I said it just like that. I was, I was. Uh, I would have not done it like that. <laughs> then come on. All right, what? Then what happened? She then she then she thought about it. Were you like, give? Why can't you? <laughs> Mike, man, I can't Give even. Me a oh, yeah, were you like that? I was like, no, I was like, did oh, you cry? Uh, I'm just, I don't know. I'm just asking. Like, I, I just, is... I just gave a a very uh, heartfelt Why um, you confession. Give us a chance. I just give, yeah, and probably borrow some quotes from some movie that oh, I know you don't want to say. I don't know. All right, so then what happened? Uh, so after she thought about it, and uh, she wanted to, did you? In a more. There you go. There you go. You put yourself and out there. I found a way out of the friend zone. There you go. There you go. But it's all about risk. Yep. It's all about putting yourself out there and not being afraid exactly. of what might be the consequences. Exactly. If you want a zero risk way of never ending up in the friend zone, there's only one way to do it. Which is? You don't become friends in the first place. There you go. 
<laughs> okay, so you basically is like from the from the get go. But see, this is what he's saying. He be he got to know her. Yeah, got to look, be friends. Look, 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 you're a nice guy, and you're like me. Okay, my whole and life. And me, and me. No, you're a little different because you will go up to girls and just ask them out. No, but but that was later. Okay, fine. Uh, for me, anyway, for you earlier, yeah. what I would do is I want to get to know the girl first before I wanted to date the girl. <laughs> so then I wanted to be her friend. And I figure, <laughs> I figure, because I watch so many freaking romantic comedies and Korean dramas and whatever, I figured that once we establish a strong connection friendship-wise, it will develop into something more. Because in my mind, there's nothing better in the world than dating your best friend. For the <laughs> girls, this is almost like doesn't what? happen, okay? Sad. You know, you know who you hear about all the time when you're when you're friend zoning with a girl. Yeah. Okay, you know who you talk, who you hear about? Oh, this guy just came up to me yesterday and asked me out. Now yeah. we're dating. And he's so hot because he was really tall and he played the guitar. Shut up. Okay. Yeah. All these guys, these guys are entering. They're bypassing the friend zone by just like right. I'm gonna ask they're you. They're laughing. And at then you. we'll find out right. by dating whether we're compatible. So what Mike basically just said is, he thought that. He, he basically put himself in the friend zone on purpose and wonder why he's in the friend zone. Okay, me, I, I try not to get in the friend zone, but for some reason, I'm just, I was just such a nice guy. I got, my, I got myself in there, not wanting to get in there. You, you waste so much energy, like all this angst and all this, you know, all this stuff. You could put all of that energy somewhere else on yourself, you know, improving yourself. Like put it on another girl for goodness sake. You know, you don't need to waste that energy. All right, now it's time for our rapid fire segment. Dan, you're on the clock. 60 seconds, you. When you were a child, what was your dream occupation from when you get older? FBI. No, like how old were you? No. My whole life. I no, want to be seriously? A, my whole you want, life. You didn't want to be an astronaut? No. I, Why you, would I want to go to space? When did you realize you want to be in the FBI? Dude, I want to, okay, I want to be a cop. Right. And so when I, was, when I was like, whatever I can remember, I wanted to be a that cop. That was your dream was occupation? My dream. Oh, my dream occupation. I want to that's be a cop. Sad. Then I came to the U.S. I want to be a, in the FBI. So wow. that's my whole life. I want to do that. What, 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 did you watch like a movie? You were no, like, oh. I just, look, here's why I believe, all right? Um, I'm, I'm more, uh, I, I'm Buddhist. So I believe in reincarnations. Okay. So I actually believe like, you know, in the past life, I was like a soldier or something. Right, right, or, right. Okay, uh, okay. You know, law enforcement or something. Right. And in this life, I think everyone kind of, you know, you always, everybody yeah. has that natural no, I agree. tendency to, to, to gravitate maybe, towards things that somehow you can't explain, right. but you just really love it. Some right. people just, you know, some people come out of the, the, the mother's womb and start playing with airplanes. They right. doesn't to be a pilot. Oh, man. Okay, 60 seconds on the clock for me. Yo, hot pot in the summer? God, yeah! I say bring it on. Yo, here's the thing. Before I, before this last year, right. I did not like hot pot. I didn't. And you and Yi basically changed that. You made me a hot pot monster. Now I'm like, yo, let's go hot pot, let's go hot pot. And there's a lot of, a uh, lot of people who don't like hot pot. Yeah. Actually, when I took a lot of uh, my wife friends to eat hot pot, you know what they said to me? <laughs> Dude, they said, why would I pay money to like eat my own, cook my own food? Exactly. Yeah. My I'm friend like, said that too. That is what the hot pot experience is all about. That's what it's all about, man. Like, dude. But the thing is, I agree. Before, I had it when I was young. I didn't like it. And then when you guys... Also, I think you gotta go with the right people. Yeah. And gotta also, go with the right people. Also, the Asians are split on, on the hot pot in the summer. Okay, right. A lot of people are like, I'm like, let's go to your hot pot. I'm like, what? So hot out there. I'm like, yeah. uh, but the hot pot place has AC. So yeah. why are you complaining? It's not like you're eating hot pot in the freaking middle of the street at 90 degree temperature. It's actually healthy for you. That's why they do it in Sichuan. It removes internal heat yeah. and dampness. It's a good thing for you. Yeah, I don't get it. All right, Dan, your turn. 60 seconds out of the clock. Best food memory in China. Oh, you know, I can't ever forget this one instance. I think I was about five or six years old and my mom bought me a roasted chicken breast. Roasted in China. chicken it's breast? Like, it's, like, it's not like roasted chicken breast sandwich like right. at McDonald's. It's right. actually a roasted chicken breast. It's so flavorful. I'm like salivating just thinking about it. Sounds kind so of flavorful. Plain. So flavorful. Was, was it like, was it like on a ever. grill? No. What? Roasted chicken, cut me off a chicken breast. Best thing ever. It's not Did even it like the rotisserie. Skin? skin. It it's not even like the rotisserie chicken you find in the supermarkets now. It's so much tastier. Was it from like, the street vendor? Like, street I vendor. can't picture this. Oh my God, it's so good. And also like, a lot of times the, what, what you remember food tasting like yeah. back in your, when you were a kid yeah. is different than what they taste like now. Definitely. You can't ever definitely. replicate a lot of those tastes. All right. Like my favorite was on the street stalls of Shanghai, the uh, shenzhen bao, basically the um, the raw uh, fried buns, sure. soupy buns. Sure. And I've tried them in America. They don't compare. Right. right. All right.
Alright, my turn! 60 seconds! 3D movie or no 3D movie? Um, no 3D movie. Uh, and here's why. I, I don't see, like, I need glasses to see movies, and when I put the 3D movie on, I get, re I get really disoriented. And, and almost like the screen shrinks for me. Like, honest, okay, here's the only 3D movies I see, blockbusters. But if I see 3D, I better see IMAX. Just go for the whole thing. And I need to wear my glasses underneath. All right, for me, like, I, I'm okay with 3D, but every time, like, most times, 7 out of 10, I'll get a headache. Yeah, me too. And I'm like, oh, me too. man, it's not even worth it. And also, it's like 18 bucks. Like, how much is yeah. It's ridiculous. Don't! The 3D movie, ridiculous. I could have had a nice meal. Dude. So, honestly, like, I see way more non-3Ds. And I don't have a problem going to see, to see 3D, but it, it's only, like, blockbusters. And it's only action blockbusters. You know, like, Transformers, we'll probably see it in 3D, you know what I mean? Or Spider-Man. You know, you know what the problem is now also is they make any movie into a 3D. Like, yes. remember that stupid movie, Avatar? They made it into a 3D, but like, it just got darker. Yeah, but I would say you have to watch that in 3D. Avatar that wasn't even really? made in 3D. All right, your turn, 60 seconds on the clock, go. Asian childhood crush, like on an Asian idol. Oh, dude, you know who I was in love with? Who's that? Xiao Ya Zhi. I don't know. I'm gonna put a picture up for you. I don't know who that she is. was the the. Oh, just who, so wait, how old are you? How old are you? Like my whole entire childhood. Was she a movie. singer, actress? No, she's an actress. Uh -huh. She's in she's that really actress. famous uh, uh, TV series called uh, Bai Shou or the the Legend of the White Snake. I don't know. Uh, I, I want to show version. me a picture. I'll show you a picture. Beautiful. You, you know who mine was? What? Co Li Wen. Coco Wen. What? Coco Lee Wen? Coco Lee. Coco Lee. It's like Coco Wen. Coco Lee's that singer, right? Yeah! She sang that, oh, uh, dude! Crouch of Tiger, Hidden Dragon yeah! thing, right? No, 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 she sang the Mulan song, too. But she sang the Crouch of Tiger, yeah, Hidden yeah, Dragon yeah. thing, right? Dude, I loved her. Dude, I was like... She good looking? Oh, man. So, dude, I was in China. I was 16. I, was, I saw her on a music video, and I literally, like, lost my mind. I was like, this is what beauty is. It's so beautiful. And I would tell people now, and they're like, what? There was, like, way more attractive. So now she's way older. So you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Coco. Sup, Coco? Sup, Co? <laughs> Dude. Okay, my turn. 60 seconds on the clock. Scariest movie you ever seen? Oh, crap. Scariest movie? I don't watch scary movies now, right. but when I was little, it right. was definitely a arachnophobia. Really? Oh my, dude, these poisonous spiders that like, oh dude, that was scary as crap. Cause spiders are real. So yeah. I'm like, I'm so afraid that these, one of these are gonna get into my house and like kill me. Dude, uh, I, and I don't get scared by movies now. What about you? Dude, uh, my scariest movie experience was this one uh, Chinese movie I saw. Cause really? Asians make like the scariest Dude. movies. Serious? There was this, a okay. I've never watched an Asian scary right, there movie. There was this movie, I remember bits and pieces of it. Uh -huh. Cause I, I watched Probably it cause we were so younger. little. Yeah, no, no, this one was super scary. <laughs> it was like, it was like a cop. Yeah. And then like they were, uh, there's some kind of uh, school reunion. Uh -huh. But every single person who was supposed to go back to this reunion, they start dying one by one. Okay, and then they, so they went to this like death. haunted cabin in the woods or something. That's scary, Dude, bro. it was like That's scary. scary. I just don't this remember. This sounds what basically it was like anymore. Friday the 13th in Chinese version. No, it's awesome. Dude, arachnophobia could be real. Never yeah, spider swat them with a newspaper. Yeah, that spit venom. No. no. All right, guys, that is the end of our third, fourth episode of. The Double Chen Show. And of course, you're watching it on the Double Chen channel. So we're going to release one on Off the Great Wall and one on this channel. So be sure to watch both. Absolutely. And check out our podcast. Seriously. Check out some of our other stuff, like our food channel. It's all awesome. Yeah. Don't forget to subscribe to this awesome baby right here. Peace out. Bye, guys.